Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Hey, welcome back to uh, your day off podcast. This is our event planning series. Um, I'm sitting here with with my friend Katie. Um, and uh, um, you know, over the last five years, we've uh, we've definitely um done uh, a few events. So we're the idea of the series is just to kind of share with you what our learns with along the uh, along the way. Um, and we're trying to do it in a very conversational type 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 manner. Um, yeah, for you know, sure. and, and hopefully, like within our conversations that uh within our short conversation, right? And the goal to stay under 10 minutes. I'm terrible at staying under 10 minutes. <laughs> but, um, Just little tidbits and elaboration on our learns. Exactly. And 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 hopefully you find value in it. And if you don't like DM Katie and, you know, show. Because <laughs> it's my idea. No. It's always, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So, so today we're going to talk about um, the, 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 the elephant in the room and that's, that's the ROI and the ROI of, of um, with your brands. And we're going to do a whole in-depth um, episode on how to write a deck, but it all kind of starts with that, with, with the a deck. sponsorship deck, sponsorship deck. Yeah. Sponsorship deck. And uh, trust you me, like, I didn't know what the word activation meant. I didn't know what the word deck meant. I, when we first got it start, when we first started doing this, I didn't even know what a headshot was. You know, people were asking me for a headshot. I'm like, what's that? You know, so, but, so, so the, sending these, them these, a selfie exactly this is this is exactly this is literally like um you know our, our learns and, and what we've learned here um actually i'm going to lean on you a little bit so uh, yeah pick up with the roi yeah so uh, we were talking about brands last week and you know how to build those relationships 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 so now you've got the relationship and you've got the brand and now you got to sell your show to them and how do you do that by giving them a return on their investment whatever they put in you need to be able to provide something out. So, you know, when you're putting together a sponsorship deck, which everyone should be doing, doesn't matter how big or small your event is, this is something that you're going to give to the brands that lays out well, what's the, available to, to, to them. I mean, let's spell it out a little bit more. You're going to give this to the connection that you have with any yeah, brand? Gonna, yes, the person, the relationship you've created. And then with the, with the deck, what you're doing, and we literally just... I think we we've done this, but we realized what we were doing is that with that deck now, um, your connection in the brand can then like um, take it up the ladder mm -hmm. and, and and explain what you, what what you're doing. And, and within that deck is is the ROI, which is what we're going to talk about a, a little bit more today. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the return on the investment is really important to the brand because you want them to come back next year and you want them to continue to support your event. But you also need to be it's give and take. You need to be supporting them as well. So, um, you know, certain things because we're a podcast, things that we do is offer, you know, interviews on our podcast with people that they want to bring in. Small things like that that really hit home with the brand that they will see, you know, impact. That's like what's most important i think yeah for, for sure and um you know even back to the word activation um if you didn't listen to the last episode an activation is just something that they're introducing to the industry in our case it's just something that they're introducing to the industry that they want to get in people's hands or they want to get in people's attention and and you know usually that's um this is something else to talk about when it comes to brands and roi is that when you ask for monies from a brand a lot of times um how that money is allocated it's allocated into like uh, different different departments in the brand and like certainly an activation is 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 in most of them is, it comes out of some kind of marketing or product or something right yeah um, come um uh, comes out of uh, you know some some kind of marketing um uh, budget yes budget thank okay. you okay yeah do it. so <laughs> anyway so so you know it's easier to get money there if they can now like create an activation go okay here's how we can get in front of you know 200 hairstyles here's how we can get our product in front of 200 hairstyles and here's what it's worth to us you know, and sometimes the activation and just doing that can can be, you know, the ROI along with like, hey, you know, let's do a QR code or let's do some kind of deal um, associated with it, with this um, activation. And now um, and now there's like double ROI. Not only are you getting to see it, which which they see as ROI, but now like we can make a little bit of money on it, too, which is also um, ROI. And it's also important when you do these things that you kind of track said things. 
you know, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, pivot point just did, um, some, a white paper, a uh, research paper that they put out talking about events and brands and, you know, connecting with people. Um, and a lot of this was in there. They were talking about, you know, communications and relationships, you know, with the, the brands. And we had just interviewed Steve and I forgot to, to mention that and talk to that about that with him. But, um, you know, brands realize that, uh, the industry is evolving and the industry is changing and they want to align with the quote cool people who are seeing that path as well and can thrust them forward with them. So if you're doing something that is different, but it's speaking to the people of our industry, then the brands want to connect with you and they want to pair with you and support you. So it's just realizing where they fit, depending on what they are. If it's a tool company, you know, if they have a new tool coming out to your point, like put it in the swag, you know, and it, it might not be a money that like might not be a money sponsorship that they're giving to you, but by them giving you swag or something like that, it's supporting your show and supporting the attendee, which for us is our mission. We want to support the attendee. Right. So, um, you know, for us, that really hits home and that's a really great ROI for both of us. So that's just something to think about, you know, when you're connecting with these brands too. Yeah. I mean, we had a relationship a couple of years ago with a brand and and they didn't bring a lot of cash to the table, but they brought a lot of product to the table. Yeah. And we literally had one of the best swag bags ever. The best. <laughs> and people, <laughs> and people literally came to our show for the swag mm -hmm. bag, you know? So, so, um, so, you know, again, that's, that, that's your own ROI, right? So, so that's your ROI and that's, and that can be like the brand's ROI as well. Um, and, and, you know, you know, with that, when you're starting to put your deck together, when you're starting to think about a brand, um, if if the intent is to make money, it's also really important that you think about making money, um, not with what's left over at the end, um, which we made that mistake a couple of years. Yeah. Like, you know, if there's any money left over, we've done well. But, you know, now how we've kind of shifted things is like we've actually made that our first line and like how much money do we need to make to make this worthwhile? Again, we've done this for five years and um, and you never make the money back with the time in exchange for the time that you've put in, but it's really nice to get something back. So, um, our, our approach, um, over the last couple of years is to think about that first. Um, and that, that should be like your own ROI, right? Think about that first and make that a line item first. Um, and then, and then, and then at that point you see if it's worth it and see where, you, where, where the money raise is, um, after that. But, um, but yeah, once again, ROI can be activations. ROI can be an introduction. ROI can be, you know, um, again, like a QR code kind of, a uh, a uh, uh, thing. So people yeah. go to your show. We've had brands triple their, uh, their input to us with just a QR code. Yeah. yeah, and, and that's for real, you know, so like for like a thousand dollar investment, they were able to make like 3000 bucks off of that. And that that's a huge ROI for them. And that makes them want to show up, not just show up again next year, but maybe show up in a bigger way next year. You know, maybe instead of that thousand yeah. dollars, maybe now it's a four or $5,000 um, sponsorship. Or the bar. Hey, hey. Or, or the bar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, so, so, you know, as parting words go, I just want you to think that if you're talking to a brand that you're talking about it from what their benefit is, you know, how can, how can your event, how can your special thing uh, benefit them? Um, that, that's the game that everybody's in is how does this benefit them? And hopefully, um, you know, you've learned that it doesn't just have to be about like, what's the money that's, that's um, padding their pockets with, but you know, with activations or, or with other, or with other things. Um, that that's that 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 that's a way as well and and i mean on that too kind of keep your eye on like brands that are up and coming you know yeah like yeah. like like up and coming brands you know they have a different budget and their budget is to like just be just hey we're here you know a lot of times these brands they don't a lot of times they, the the up and coming brands they don't know how to access stuff and they don't even know about the shows and stuff so keep your eyes on those and to backtrack back into trans um back into relationships when you're at the hair shows you know look at the ones that are that are that that um are spending a little bit more money that aren't that aren't as popular um as be, as that we've seen like i know um certainly for btc in 2021 that was k18 for us we saw k18 mm -hmm. like wow k18 spending a lot of money and you know we they, they weren't a household name at that point so that told me that they were they were spending money for the attention and 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 you know we're able to give them we were able to give them attention and and we were able to um create a relationship over uh, um, um through that but um but yeah just look for the brands that are, are more desperate um to 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 get 
to be noticed, right? Yeah. To, to, yeah. To, listen, we're all in the attention game, right? So yeah, yeah, who's, yeah. who's looking for that attention? And, you know, that's not necessarily the Wellers or the Redkins or, or the, those that have been around forever. Um, those are a lot harder to touch, but, you know, maybe some of those up and coming brands or, you know, if, if you go to, you know, salon centric or Cosmo prop, like what's the newest product on the shelf? That That's so important to know, though. I'm glad you brought that up because the newer brands, you know, they um, they do. They just kind of want to be seen. But older brands like Wella or Redken, you know, they want to do the more creative or they want to be involved in more creative ways. So, you know, that's important to know, too, when it, depending on what you're pitching them. Sure. That, that's actually a great that's a great, great point. All right, cool. I think we've uh, we, we are we we've at done, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We're, we're we're pretty good. We're trying Four, to stay. We're trying. We're so far. We've two, been good. One. Okay, we're at ten minutes <laughs> okay, right now. So let's go now. So yeah. Um. And please do us a favor. And um. If you've heard this, if you found value, please reach out and just let us know. Um. Yeah, hair yeah. history host on Instagram. Uh, any questions or anything you want us to talk about too? Yeah, for sure. And just in in DM us at hair history as well. And um. Yeah, I'm glad this is open for conversation. You know, hopefully you found some value here. So once again, thank you for joining us with, you know, your event of the future. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Street on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.